Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, as it's currently October, we're going to be taking a look at how to paint up these cunning orc commandos from the recently released Warhammer 40k Kill Team Octarius box set. This set introduces us to the new second edition of Kill Team, and provides a much more intricate and dynamic style of skirmish play, as well as bringing us two new sets of plastic miniatures, the Death Corps of Krieg and these orc commandos who, defying orc culture, opt for stealthy tactics and yes, even shooting. I've also previously done an unboxing video for this set, so I'll pop a link to this in here, so you can check out all the books, terrain and accessories you get in this box. So we'll be going through how to paint these commandos step by step, and although we're using these new Kill Team miniatures, you can also use this video to paint up any orcs you have for your games of Warhammer 40k too. We'll start off by building up a zenithal highlight on our orcs. What this means is that we're going to use progressively lighter colours, from black to grey to white, to mimic light hitting the models from above to hopefully create some nice contrast in the green skin tones. This isn't necessary, if all you have is a grey, black or white primer spray, then by all means just use this and you'll still get some great looking orcs. I'll only apply a black base coat to one of these miniatures and then we can take a look at these results later in the video just to compare. But if you do have all these sprays, we're going to begin by applying a light all over coat of black primer. Wait for this to dry, then reach for your grey paint, and this time we want to apply a coat from only above the minis, ensuring not to spray underneath the models and cover over any of that black that we want to keep as a shadow. Wait for this to dry too, and then we're going to apply a very short blast of white spray paint from directly above the miniatures. In the end, we should have something like these boys, black underneath, grey in the mid, and white directly above, so we have a gradient shift from light to dark. And of course, in solidarity with my orcs, I've managed to also build up a really nice mottled effect on my hand too with these sprays. Okay, let's move on from grayscale and introduce some colour to these orcs. And what better place to begin than green? So, grab your palette and water down an appropriately orky green. I'm using the Goblin Green paint from my usual beginner set of Vallejo paints, which I'll leave an affiliate link to in the description below, as well as links to all the tools and paints used throughout this video. To ensure that we get the effect of our zenithal highlight coming through, we want to water down this paint more than we usually would, so not as thin as a glaze, but not as thick as a usual coat, somewhere in between. We're also going to defy usual convention and apply only one thin coat rather than the usual two. Don't need to be too neat here, it's an early stage and any mistakes are going to be painted over, so just get a nice thin coat of our green paint and all the skin that's showing through on these minis. And these guys are actually quite well dressed for orcs, so for the most part we've only got arms and hands to paint. So once you've got all your boys looking their greeniest, we'll lay down some black paint all over the areas we want to be metallic and black, so that's the weapons, bullets, accessories, boots and any pieces of clothing we want to be black. So try not to get any of this paint on your green skin, but if you do slip over, no worries, we can just apply a bit more green now if it's still wet on your palette, or we can just apply it later when we're doing a tidying up. As these guys are going to be performing spec ops, they're going to have quite a few black pieces of clothing, so this stage could take a while. Here's one trick, you could try to speed this up. If you have any white tack or blue tack, you can affix it to the skin to protect it like this and then give these guys another blast of black spray paint. Then we can just peel this tack off, and we've got that nice complex skin tone from the zenithal highlight underneath, but with a solid foundation for our metallics and dark clothing down the line. If you want to skip the zenithal highlight and save yourself some time and hassle, uh, this comms boy is one that I've just based with the black spray paints, and then I've applied the green to the skin. So you can see it's a bit flatter and not as toned, but still fine when compared to this Zenful Highlighter Sniper. If you're struggling to peel this putty off after spraying too, like I did, uh, you can use another piece of the putty to pull it away like this. Okay, now we can add a bit more colour. Uh, grab a brown paint and apply this to a few pieces of clothing on your orcs, as well as anything that's going to be made out of wood, like a weapon or stick bomb handles. I'm going to pick out this boy's trousers, and I'm also going to apply a coat of this brown paint to this boy's backpack. 
no need to worry about getting any paint on the netting or bullets in here. Uh, we're going to be painting over these later on. And I'm also going to pick out the apron on the burner boy. Next, grab a grey paint or you can just mix a bit of white and black together and pick out a few areas you'd like to be grey cloth. So I'm going to paint the Grot Star Pool in with this. And I'm also going to paint the Convoy's trousers with this colour too. Um, I should apologise at this point too for the plaster that's appeared on my finger. I somehow managed to cut myself making a sandwich. Who knew baguettes could be so perilous? Uh, we can also use this grey paint to pick out any stone colours too. So the sledgehammer on this orc's backpack for example, and the stones on the knob's base. It mentions in the Octaris book that commandos often wear green clothing, so not wanting to blend this too much with the green skin, I'm going to pick out a few pieces of cloth with a dark green paint. I'm going to water this down so you know, a bit more than usual and that allows that base colour to come through again. That's going to really dull down that green so that it looks even darker, which I think will add to the covert nature of these orcs, as well as distance it again away from that sort of lighter green skin tone. Uh, I'm also going to apply this dark green to a few of the grenades, just to suggest that they're non-lethal ones, like uh, smoke or stun grenades. And, introducing, for the first time, a paint that was not included in the Vallejo paint set. Uh, I thought it was only appropriate to get a nice purple to match the Jamhammer colours. Uh, and also, fluff-wise, orcs believe that certain colours have magical properties, and purple means more sneak. So, I had to paint these crafty commandos with some purple accent. So each of these boys is going to get a little bit of this colour to reflect their sneaky nature. I think that having one shared colour like this that's on each of your miniatures also helps to unite your unit together. So if you're running a certain clan, you can paint these accent areas accordingly. So let's say yellow for your covetous bad moons, or red for your speedy evil suns, etc. I'm painting a few areas on mine. Uh, accordingly, so we've got wristbands, uh, shoulder emblems, cuffs, hats, gloves, medals, shooter casings, they're all going to get a coat of this purple. Even large areas like trousers or backpacks could be painted to reflect some really sneaky cloth. Or make your leader look shockingly reminiscent of the Incredible Hulk. Dude's ripped. Next up, get a leather brown paint and pick out anything that's going to be, well, leathery. So we want to pick out any packs, belts, straps, holsters, weapon wraps, or hastily stitched patches, and uh, even pieces of clothing that want to have this hue. Still want a few of these sorts of accessories to have different colours like they've been dyed black, green or purple, just to reflect the sneaky nature of these commandos. Then we want to paint a few pieces red, so look for any dynamites, grenades or weapon power packs that you want to be red. These bean orcs, they are packing more than a few of these items. Give these a thin coat, and if you really want the red to pop, you're probably going to need to give them a second coat too. We also want to get this bomb squig ready for sploding, so much like the green coat at the beginning, we want to give it a nice thin coat of red all over, allow for that zenithal highlight to show through, and then we can always go back and tie that up later. Grab an off-white next and pick out any remaining cloth areas, as well as things like uh, weapon straps, ropes and shoelaces, and give all of these a nice thin coat. Uh, some of these will probably need a second coat too, as we're applying a light colour over a dark base. Get your brush to a nice sharp point, or switch over to a detail brush, and just carefully pick out little details too, like fingernails and teeth. Whilst you've got this colour out, if you can grab uh, an old brush, or if you've got one, a bespoke dry brush, and work some of this paint into the bristles. Then, wipe most of this off onto a piece of kitchen paper, and then just lightly drag it all over the miniature, paying particular attention to any areas that we've left black. Now what this will do is it'll catch on the raised areas, and add a little bit more depth to these colours, and just help to raise them from the flatness that we've currently got. Uh, now this might make your miniatures look a little bit dusty, but not to worry, we'll soon sort this out in the wash stage. Next, get a gunmetal paint and go over all those areas that you want to be a nice metallic silver. So that's like the uh, boys chop blades, this one's stick bomb, and just be on the lookout for um, these crampons on the orc's boots too. Now these guys are adept at scaling the terrain of a kill zone, so we want to make sure that we give those metallic parts of their boots a coat of that paint too. 
We also want to pick out the metal parts of their guns, and perhaps just a few grenade casings for variety, and uh, any armor plating like on the Bruiser Boy's shoulder, helmet, uh, parts of his weapon, and the landmine on his backpack. Oh, what's this? Another new paint? Yep, I've been picking up issues of the new Warhammer 40k Imperium magazine collection from Hatchet Partworks, where you build up armies, tools and paints over the run of the series. I'll put a link in here to the first issue of this, so please do check that video out if you're interested. And uh, issue 2 of this series came with a few Necron Warriors, as well as a Citadel paint, uh, Rune Lord Brass. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this to add some variety to those metallics. Uh, by all means, this isn't a compulsory step, you could just paint these with that gunmetal metallic, but I thought that, say, the coil here on the comms gun and a few other bits would look good in this colour. I'm also going to pick out the bullets that are liberally spread across these orcs with this brass paint too, and maybe just the odd grenade here and there. Much in the same vein, I'm going to get out the gold paint now and add a little of this to a few pieces like the hilts of these daggers and the Dacker Boy's decorative ornament here. Any bits of jewellery and of course what self-respecting knob would command any respect without a giant gold belt buckle. Turning to the white paint now, we want to paint the body of these rockets so they look aptly cartoonish as well as the skull motifs on most of these boys' masks. Again, we're painting this over a dark base colour, so we'll probably need to paint at least two thin coats of paint on this, just to preserve the detail and ensure a smooth finish. I'm also going to paint this white over any of the glass parts, like on this scope, and what we can do then is apply a thin gloss over these later to hopefully create a nice lens effect, as well as putting a base of white on any parts that we want to be bright and colourful down the line. Like on the Burner Boy here, I've based the fire on his flamethrower and mask white, so we can apply a coat of orange paint to this and it'll really pop. We can then add a bit of yellow to the tips of these to complete this flame effect. We could do the same thing for any cabling that we want to be bright to, like uh, on this Rocket Boy here. So we've painted this white, and then we can now apply a very vibrant yellow over the top. And uh, while we've got this yellow paint out, I'm also going to paint these flippers and snorkel on the grot. Grab your blue next and paint in those last remaining cables and finish off the flippers and the snorkel with a bit of blue so this guy is ready for a dip in the pool. Finally, thin your green paint so that it's translucent and paint a very thin layer over the white glass parts just to finish off the lenses like this. And we should be about there. Uh, now would be a really good time to check over your minis and paint any parts that you may have forgotten or slipped up on. So for myself, I noticed I'd missed a few bits of skin on some of these orcs, so I'm just going to add a bit of our original green paint to these. Uh, I also forgot to paint the leather straps on our squig here, so I'm going to fill those in now. And I, uh, I also didn't paint the grey stones on the knob's base, and there's the rubber cable on the burner boy, so we're just going to rectify that. So these guys are all painted up now and ready for a wash. Uh, now you can apply a black wash and a brown wash individually here, but I thought that the green skin on the orcs would look best with a combination of the two to provide a more natural dark coat over the green and then it'll settle into the recesses. So what I did is I added equal parts water, brown wash and black wash. Still using the army painter shades at the moment, so that's one part water to one part strong tone to one part dark tone and then just liberally daub this all over the minis. Ensure that this doesn't pool on any large flat pieces by having another dry brush on standby and then just wicking this away as necessary. Now as this has a brown wash in it too, I didn't want the white areas to end up looking too grubby and so I wicked away most of the wash that ended up on these parts and then just let it settle into the recesses instead. So this commando kill team is now painted up to a tabletop ready standard and it can be used in your skirmish games or added to a 40k roster to provide some ancillary support to your main orc forces. But as ever there's more that we can do to these boys to make them really stand out on the battlefield. So if you take your base green paint and add in a little bit of yellow just to line the colour and add a bit of warmth, we can pick out a few of the raised areas on the model to add a bit more life. 
If you did the zenithal highlight, you can apply this light colour to any of those parts across the miniature that stand out anyway, and it provides like a really helpful guide as to where the light would naturally hit these minis. Or you could just apply this to any raised areas on the flesh and just make sure to keep this lighter colour out of those shaded recesses by using a clean, dry brush to wick away any slippage. Uh, whilst we've got the yellow out, we can apply this to the yellow parts that may have been dulled a little bit too much in the wash stage. We can also add even more yellow to that green, so make it just even lighter and apply a tiny bit to those raised areas just to finish it off. Back to our sneaky purple parts, if we add a touch of white to this, we can highlight a few of those areas too. Now make sure not to add yellow to this one, as these are contrasting colours and rather than adding warmth to this, what it'll do is make it a gross sludgy brown colour. So don't need to be too liberal with this, just tracing a few of the edges on the weapons and backpacks, as well as the raised creases and folds on any of the parts that we've painted purple, and that'll add a lot of depth to the minis down the line. Next up, we'll grab our off-white bone colour paint again and water this down nicely so it's smooth and then just pick out the edges of these parts like the tips of the teeth on the squig here. Now there's no need to lighten this anymore, just applying this over those parts that have been darkened with the wash will be enough to lighten this and re-establish those mid-tones. We can also pick out the raised folds in any cloth and trace a little over the burned flesh on the burner boy here too and then we can also pick out the net backpack on the slasher boy. Now if we get that yellow paint again and add it into the red, we can use this warm orange colour to highlight the red part to the minis. So, much like before, we can pick out the edges of these power packs, and along the tops of the dynamite and grenade bundles. And we can also use this, much like the green highlights on the squig, to pick out the zenithal highlights or indeed the raised parts of this mini to create some more interesting skin tones on the model. If you've a steady hand and a brush with a good point, we can carefully pick out the eyes of the orcs with this warm orangey red too. While I had the red out, I also added a little bit of white to make a light pink colour and painted the squig's tongue too. If you go for your silver paint next, we can thin that down just a little and then pick out a few areas on our metallics to highlight too. We can trace this across edges to make them look sharp and also paint areas to look scuffed, like they've already been scraped against walls and floors of a kill zone. You can use this silver to bring out any buckles, buttons, or rivets on our orcs too. Turning to the brown parts of our models now, we can add a little yellow again, thin this paint down so it blends nice and smoothly, and then just trace out the edges of any of the straps or packs that we've painted brown, as well as along the creases of any cloth areas that we've painted with this colour, Again, making sure to keep this paint out of the recesses. Next, grab your white paint and then just re-establish this colour where it might have been contaminated by that wash and just bring out some of that vibrancy again, like on the fins of these rockets here and around the edges of the skull mask, as well as the power pack uh, lightning bolt there. We can also add just a little dab of this to the tips of teeth and nails just to finish those off. And there we go, the main highlights have been done and our boys are ready to head off and carry out spec ops behind enemy lines. We've got some nice skin tones on these boys, we've added plenty of variety with various colours on the cloth, but made sure to add plenty of that main purple colour to bring them all together under one sneaky banner. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, I didn't base these orcs before priming them. Uh, basically, I was waiting for this to arrive. It's a bespoke basing set to try and replicate the colours and textures that are on the board, including this Octarius box set. So if you take a look at this board and then what's included here, I think that this sand on the bases will be best, and perhaps these bits that look like cork will serve as the little rocks. I'll leave a link to this set below too, so you can check that out if you're interested. I'm going to empty the contents of these bags into these little pots, and then as my PVA glue is quite viscous, I'm just going to water this down a little bit, 
and then carefully apply a layer all of the bases of the minis and then dip them into this material. Then wait for that to dry and pop a few spots more PVA here and there just where we want the rocks to go and then carefully pop those in place. While we wait for this PVA to dry, if you grab your brown paint again and apply just a thin layer all around the base, uh, it's no worries if it's still a little bit streaky as we are going to go back over this again later. Once the bases are dry, using that same brown paint, just thin it down a little bit more than usual so that it flows nicely, and then paint all over the base. It might be beneficial if you use a stippling motion like this, just to get the brush to work the paint down over the gritty textures and ensure they get some good coverage. Leave these to dry again and then get out your off-white bone colour again and then work it into the bristles of an old brush. Dry brush the base liberally with this colour, making sure to really pay attention and catch those bits of cork because they're going to serve as our rocks. And then whilst that's drying again we just apply another thin coat of that brown paint around the edges just to ensure that it's smooth and that's opaque. And now we're finished with this kill team of sneaky commandos ready to cause carnage and mayhem. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. Please let me know down in the comments if you're also playing the new version of Kill Team and what you think of the revised 2nd edition rules, or if you prefer bringing endless hordes of orcs to your games of 40k, what you think of the 9th edition orc codex. I'll be making a start on painting the Death Corps of Krieg soon, so if you're a fan of the Imperial Forces, keep an eye out for more Octarius content coming soon to the Jamhammer channel. Thanks again for watching.